And welcome to the July 17th, 2014 Longview City Council meeting that is now in order. Um, before we do the prayer and the pledge, um, I'd like to ask everyone here and also the community uh, to keep John Petty and his family uh, in your prayers. Uh, John Petty was a great humanitarian, uh, you know, great person, um, an adventurer, uh, and unfortunately, not, not sure of all the facts yet, but uh, unfortunately met a time of death doing what he loved to do. Um, so uh, as we start our meeting with our prayer, we'd like to ask you to please uh, keep John and his family uh, in your prayers. Tonight, the prayer and the pledge will be led by Pastor Wayne Spanhanks of Spring Hill Baptist Church. Would you please stand? Let us pray. Father, we begin our prayer this morning with a remembrance of John and his life. We thank you, Lord, for the influence that he has and uh, still in our community. And we do pray for his family, pray his friends might gather around them, Father, and give them encouragement and strength in the days ahead. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and your promise to us of comfort in times like this. And we look to you, Father, for that. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come together as a community, Father, in this uh, city that we live in. We thank you for the privilege we have to be a part of this process. We thank you for those who serve us, Father, and pray that you might give them wisdom, strength, understanding, and help them, Father, always to act courageously as they make their choices. Father, we ask you to be with this meeting tonight that they might make those good choices that affect so many people. Be with our countrymen, Father, who serve us in dangerous places. Watch after our leadership. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you join me in our pledge to the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor, thank you. <clears throat> Council, before we do citizen comment, we have a couple of special guests here tonight from our neighboring city of Kilgore. We have uh, Mayor Ronnie Spradlin and also Mayor Pro Temp Harvey McClendon. And in visiting with the mayor, he'd like to address the council. Mayor? Man, and y'all come on together. I really, really want to take much of your time. I just wanted to tell you how much we appreciate your help over the last several years. You've, uh, your IT department has helped us clean up our IT system, and it's, uh, we've been very appreciative of that. Your teen court system has helped us set up a teen court in Kilgore that's really going great. We're very appreciative. You, we have a mutual aid agreement with the fire departments we've never had before that uh, we were very thankful for. And uh, I don't know if y'all know it, but several of your department heads helped us hire our police chief, fire chief, and several other department heads and helped us make some really great decisions. So. We have, look forward to a lot more working with Longview, and we appreciate what you've done so far. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thank you. I, I just echo those. I, you know, I want to personally thank you for for all the all these things you've done in cooperation with us and uh, being being good neighbors. We, we really appreciate that. And uh, I, I just have to apologize. I've lived in Kilgore for 25 years now, and on the council for seven. It's the first time that I've been in, in your chamber. So, but. Uh, uh, we just wanted to, to thank you all and uh, appreciate everything well, we doing and look you, forward to the future. Yeah, We want to tell you all we, we appreciate you all coming to. The mayor and I have had several conversations and, uh, you know, it, it's a new day for both Longview and Kilgore of mm -hmm. cooperating. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that happens in Longview is good for Kilgore and anything right. that happens in Kilgore is good for Longview. And, Absolutely. you know, I know a lot of this uh, started with the sort of back and forth over, you know, the water project. Uh, you you have my commitment, I think the commitment of this council to finding ways to work together and to make that a reality and we're, we're open to seeing how we do that. But you know, it, it uh, is very appreciative that y'all would come and visit with us and uh, hey, we hope to come and visit with y'all as well. You're, you're welcome. Okay, <laughs> it's thank a you. lot more fun to be on this side. Of, uh, <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. Hey, yeah. in about yeah. six months, I'm going to be able to do that same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good luck with your uh, budget work that thank you're you. going to do thank later. You guys. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to start off. I've got a speaker card from Jill Norvell. Hello, 
My name is Jill Norvell. I live at 1314 East Fairmont. And I understand I am in... My district? No. <laughs> there he is. I've talked to him once. Now, surely you don't think he and I look alike. Do what? <laughs> anyway, on the morning of May 5th, I woke up to go to the restroom at about 3 o'clock in the morning, and my house was completely flooded in feces. And I'm being very nice when I use that word. Anyway, <clears throat> I waited around till I thought it was a reasonable time to call somebody. And I called my son because I honestly thought my house was covered in mud, although it didn't smell good. But it was that thick. Anyway, uh, the city did come out about 1 o'clock and began working in cleaning up the mess. And uh, there were two separate trucks that came. They dug up both of my driveways uh, to repair the line, and it was the city's fault because Anyway, so <clears throat> they uh, told me, uh, oh, well, I asked where I was going to sleep that night, and uh, they did uh, provide me with a room for two nights at the Motel 6, and I was assured continuously by the people there, which was people with the sewage department and their supervisors, that everything would be taken care of. And the whole time, I kept my sense of humor and my temper. I did not get upset by any of it. Also, in addition, a, a gentleman uh, came out to the house that was the insurance adjuster. And he took numerous pictures of which I do not have copies of. But anyway, the sewage had come up through my commode in the front bath, in the bathtub about yay deep, any place else through the house. So uh, Kathy's Carpet Care, who I understand the city uses, uh, came out and did my house the next day and everything, which put us to Saturday night. Anyway, uh, the end result is that the house was a beautiful job done in the cleanup. But it ended up that I have three bedrooms that portions of the carpet had to be cut out, I guess. Well, I know it did. And also, uh, the rest of the house is ceramic tile. And in the hall coming down, was several pieces of loosened tile that need to be replaced. So uh, this went on for some time. And um, finally, and I don't have the exact date, the 28th, um, I call my the adjuster there. By the way, I forgot to tell you, I do not have homeowner's insurance because I am a senior citizen and quite frankly, I could not afford it. But anyway, I talked to Aaron, uh, who is the adjuster, 
and he told me Thursday afternoon, the 27th, the amount of my of the adjustment he had made of what he what he thought it would take to put the house back together. And I was quite surprised at the amount. He estimated 14,000 and some odd dollars. Okay, but anyway, the next day, uh, late afternoon, Aaron called again and told me that the city had decided that they would not give me any money to make the necessary repairs on my house. And that is kind of the, um, where we stand right now. Okay, ma'am, let me, let, me, let me address a couple of things with you, okay? And I know you're, this is making you uncomfortable first time coming up here and whatnot, but um, we have sewer lines that throughout the city periodically rupture, and they rupture because of roots, because of a lot of different things, mm -hmm. okay? And we are covered with our insurance through the Texas Municipal League, mm -hmm. and a lot of the guidelines, okay, that we follow is through that program, okay? So you're not the first person that's had this happen, and you're not the first person that has felt um, denied, if you will, or shortchanged because of what took place, all right? I'm gonna suggest that this is the first time I'm hearing about this. I heard about it just before the meeting, okay? Um, I don't know that you talked to Mr. Allen or not, but I have not heard this. But I'm going to suggest that um, she did, we go to the we go city. back, yeah. okay? But we go back and look at the totality of the situation, because the the circumstances the city's in is this has happened to a lot of neighbors or a lot of citizens, and and when we do something for one, we have to be prepared to do it for the next person too, okay? And I don't want to use that terrible term called immunity, which I know Ms. Allen hates, but, but the city has thousands, I don't know how many, a thousand miles of sewer pipe and water pipe, okay? But I think we need, and what we've done in the past is kind of taken a look at it individually and what the circumstances were. So what we have to do now, I'm going to suggest, is that we look at the entirety of this situation, Ms. Fields, and get back with us and let us see what we can do, okay? All right. So, like I said, I just want the small things, uh, not sure. small to me, sure. in my house fixed. Did the, um, the 14,000 adjuster suggestion cover what Ever use whatever was going to cost you to make your house whole again? Was that going to no, cover? No, I do not think so. Okay. I have looked this over, and I really don't understand. Okay. But I have a copy of it. Well, that should be part of the uh, the process to look. I don't know that any of our people have seen that, but I mean, I think. Look, why don't we let's take a step back, and hopefully your house is livable now. I wouldn't have stayed in there after one o'clock. I'm. I mean, I don't. I don't know that I could have stayed in there. You, you're, you're tough to stay in there under those circumstances. But let let us let let us get the entirety of this situation, look at it, and see what we can put together for you. Okay? That'll be fine. Thank you, ma'am. As long as somebody will contact me, I have had a very difficult time getting anyone to talk to me. Well, you're right here. You're, well, you're, he was very nice. You're right here talking. But uh, I have, anyway, I would gonna, really somebody, appreciate we, taking that into consideration, considering I ha have lived in the house for 36 years. Wow. Okay. And I cannot afford to fix the repairs that are necessary. Okay. All well, right. What, what we'll need to do is to take a look at that. I mean, what that what that appraiser amount was versus exactly what's what 
it needs to be done to make the house whole in addition to us that cleaning is up. Exactly and right. then we're gonna we're gonna come up with a game plan, okay? All right. Thank you, ma'am, for you. coming. Okay. God the whole computer went out. I don't have any other citizen comment cards. Uh, so we're gonna go to the consent agenda. Uh, is there any item on the consent agenda council would like to consider separately? If not, may I have a Move motion and a second? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Zoning public hearing items. Item A, public hearing to consider application HL 1402. Mr. Shirley. Thank you, Mayor Dean, members of council, Mr. Willard. Uh, the first application that we have before you tonight is for, uh, is HL 14-02. Uh, which is followed by a preservation long view requesting historic landmark designation uh, for the Judge Campbell House located at 433 South Center Street. Um, cool. I think most of you are familiar with the location here. I believe they've received some city participation in that project. Uh, there's an aerial view. Um, here's the original 1870s. And I'll just kind of scroll through the different uh, variations of the house over the years. This is what it looked like more recently under construction. I believe if you've driven by there lately, you'll see that they've uh, put the front canopy back on and are moving forward with that project. Uh, but uh, without going into to great details, uh, the Preservation Commission and Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as staff, do recommend designation as our second uh, local landmark uh, behind the depot. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, Council, you have any questions of Mr. Shirley? This item requires a public hearing. The public hearing is now open. I have a speaker card, well, actually two of them, and they're both here to answer any questions. We have Ms. Lynette Goodson, who's been on the front end of this project since the beginning, and also Carrie Martin. There he is. And uh, so do y'all have any, or would y'all like to speak or are you here for questions? Okay, any questions of these members of the Preservation Longview? If not, uh, is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this matter that maybe didn't fill out a card? If not, the public hearing is closed. May I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion in a second and a third. All in favor say aye. Aye. <coughs> All opposed, motion passes. Thank y'all. Keep doing a great job. Item B, public hearing to consider uh, by the Zorn Family Limited Partnership. Mr. Shirley. Thank you, Mayor Dean. This is for an abandonment of a portion of Clay Street and also abandonment of a portion of a 15-foot wide alleyway. Uh, this is in the Skyway Acres subdivision, uh, and this is for uh, the completion of the Golden Corral. This is part of the planned development that Council approved a number of months ago. Uh, this is just a continuation of the redevelopment of that area of Clay Street. Uh, as, you, as you know, this is adjacent to the Nukes. Uh, and this is very similar to the process that they went through abandoning alleyways uh, and, and Clay Street right of way. And uh, do recommend approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions. That's close to the new Rays and Canes, huh? That, that's down the list. We'll Damn. get to that. I tell you what, I tried to get me some chicken the other day. <laughs> they had the police getting people in and out of there. It was packed. Okay, this, uh, y'all have any questions on this item before we go to public hearing? Okay, this item requires a public hearing. The public hearing is now open. I do not have any speaker cards on this item. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this matter? If not, the public hearing is closed. May I have a motion? So I'll move. Have Second. a motion. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passed. Item C, consider, public hearing consider a, a request filed by National Retail Properties. Thank you, Mary Dean. This is for the Raising Canes property. It is to abandon a portion of the uh, Clay Street right of way out front uh, and turn that over to private maintenance. It will still remain open for through traffic that would eventually lead to the redevelopment of that area, as well as the conversion of the alleyway from a public alleyway into a private maintained alleyway. Uh, staff does recommend approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions, comments? You'd make an amendment and get you a parking space. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Chief, I see Chief uh, Bishop back there. Now listen, I wasn't saying the police were in there getting the chicken. I was saying there was such traffic on airline that they were having a direct traffic. So I want to get any of my friends in trouble now. <laughs> Must be pretty good chicken. Uh, did you have something? Just one. 
What you what you want some chicken to? Well, sh certainly yes. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, it's from Louisiana, so it's good chicken. Okay, uh, Michael, I'm just <laughs> curious. Was there some reason they did not do this previously to the construction of the building? Or, um, um, this was approved as part of the plan development and just through the construction and relocation, this is kind of a finalization. Uh, we felt that because uh, the city council approved their PD amendment that included the abandonment of this that we felt we could move forward. Uh, even if council doesn't approve it, we have a rebuilt city street out there that functions. So, Okay, I just uh, uh, would like to see, you know, what you said is a good understanding, but we don't want to get behind sometimes. Correct. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? And, and you may remember they were pretty quick on their construction. They were so. very, quick. <laughs> uh, very quick. This yeah. item requires a public hearing. I do not have any speaker cards. Would anyone like to speak to this matter? <clears throat> if not, the public hearing is closed. May I have a motion? Move to approve. Have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. <laughs> item D, public hearing to, uh, to consider a request filed by Good Shepherd Health System. Thank you, Mayor. This is to abandon uh, a portion of an existing 20-foot wide sanitary sewer easement. This is for their new facility uh, at 323 East Hawkins. Uh, this is to allow for uh, relocation of a sewer line where their new building is. This was abandoned in place, and we're just asking to uh, abandon that portion of the easement to allow them to uh, move forward. Questions? Okay, this item requires a public hearing. Public hearing is now open. I do not have any speaker cards. Would anyone like to speak to this matter? If not, the public hearing is closed. May I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion. Second. Second off, ever say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. And item E, public hearing to consider a request filed by Aciela Marino. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is to abandon a portion of a 10 foot wide uh, alleyway. This is located uh, adjacent to Court Street and Edith Street. Uh, as you can see here where uh, Court Street rolls around this property right here. There's a portion of an alleyway that was never constructed and they're just asking the city to abandon that right of way to allow them to use that property. Uh, and, and staff does recommend approval. I'd be okay. happy to answer any questions. Questions? If not, this item requires a public hearing. The public hearing is now open. Is there anyone here to speak to this matter? So I'm assuming that since no one's here to speak to all these abandonments, that notification was sent to the neighbors we're on not required, adjacent properties that we we're, we're not required to do the adjacent property notification. We did post it in the newspaper as required. Okay, and, and receive no No negative concerns. feedback. Okay. Uh, all the adjacent property owners directly impacted are a part of the, the application. So. Okay. All right, so is there anyone here like to speak to that matter? If not, public hearing is closed. May I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion. A second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, item seven. The moment we've all been waiting for. Uh -oh. <laughs> you want to go up there or you want to stay here? You got that number two pencil? Oh, come on now. Uh, item seven is budget item presentation of the proposed fiscal year 2014-2015 budget for the city of Longview. Mr. Willard. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. It's my pleasure tonight to present for your consideration a proposed budget for the city of Longview for the 2014-2015 budget year. The document that you have before you is the culmination of a process that began in May and will end when the council adopts the final version of this budget uh, in the beginning of September. As we go forward from tonight, there will be plenty of opportunities for discussion and public input. The city staff, as always, will be more than happy uh, to answer any questions that you might have, as well as providing you with any additional information that will help you make informed decisions. Once again, our city staff has done an excellent job of managing their 2013-2014 budget, and we expect to end this budget year in September uh, at or below budget. In preparation of this year's budget, we began with the expe expectation of moderate but not substantial growth in revenue. Since 2011, property values have grown only an average of 1.24%. This moderate growth has allowed the city to maintain our current level of services and operations, even as cost of doing business has risen. But it does not leave much room for enhancements. 
With that in mind, we also realize that we need to prepare for large fund balance expenditures for the proposed construction of an animal shelter as well as additional work on George Ritchie Road. In preparing this budget for you, we have kept the following goals in mind. To budget conservatively, to remain fiscally responsible, uh, to reduce costs throughout the budget when possible, and to continue to provide quality services to the citizens, especially in the core areas of public safety and public works. And then we also uh, set aside fund balance uh, for the proposed animal shelter and George Ritchie Road. I want to thank all of the uh, directors and department heads and their staff for uh, the tremendous amount of work they've done to get to this point tonight and present you this proposed budget. Uh, it's taken a, a lot of staff time and we appreciate uh, all the work they've put into it and the effort uh, that they've come to the table with. Also, I want to thank our, our city manager budget finance team uh, that helps me tremendously. Uh, Assistant City Manager Keith Bonds, uh, Director of Finance Angela Cohen, uh, Director of Administration Marianne Miller, and Assistant to the City Manager Sean Hara. Uh, that is our budget team, and, and they've just done a great job, and I could not do that, uh, any of this, without them, so I appreciate all their hard work as well. Uh, before we get into the meat of the budget, I wanted to uh, begin and just give you an update and a reminder of things that we have going. Uh, this year and that will continue into the, the new budget year. And most of these items that we want to go over are things that have already been appropriated, but uh, that are um, significant items as we go forward and just to give you an update of, of where we are. The first one is the comprehensive plan. Last year, council approved uh, a contract with Friesen Nichols uh, Consulting Group to provide their services and doing a, a comprehensive uh, long-range plan. Uh, this is uh, in the year most of you all and city council have been involved in that at some level. Uh, we have a, a council appointed uh, comprehensive plan committee that's been hard at work. We've had uh, several meetings with that group. One large public meeting that we had at the Belcher Center this last year that was just in, in my uh, view, very successful. Seven or 800 citizens came in uh, to participate in that. Uh, we've also had subcommittees uh, working to, uh, uh, on the budget, on the, not the budget, but the, uh, the plan document as well. And those committees have been hard at work. We have one more public meeting uh, tentatively scheduled for October of 2014. And then the comprehensive Plan Committee will conclude all of their work and a document uh, will be prepared that will come to the City Council for your review, uh, comments, and then uh, ultimately uh, ask you to adopt that uh, comprehensive plan. So um, it's a, a very important work and we'll be concluding that in this upcoming budget year. Uh, the second current project that's very significant that was approved uh, during this budget year but will continue uh, into the new year is the uh, 4th Street extension construction that will extend Hawkins Parkway, uh, 4th Street at the Hawkins Parkway intersection northward. And you'll see on the, uh, uh, the illustration that we have here, uh, north is to, is to this part of the slide. So. Hawkins and 4th is this intersection. This will be constructed. A five-lane uh, road will be uh, through this and will be connected at US 259. This will, uh, will open up a lot of construction. It will help a lot of the inter interchange connectivity here uh, and the flow of traffic. This is a developer uh, public-private partnership participation agreement uh, that the city's been involved in. And, uh, a very good, very good project. This is scheduled, the design is finished on it, and I think it's scheduled uh, to be let for bids uh, at the end of this month. So uh, that's a, a project that uh, will extend also into this, this budget year. And then uh, the street bond progress. We, uh, of course, council uh, put out and the voters approved a 2011 street bond project for $52 million. And here is just a little synopsis. We've been well underway uh, since that time, and we're about a little over probably halfway finished with all of those projects. But you can go down and see uh, some of those. Uh, let's back up a little bit, Sean. 
some of those projects and where we, we've completed uh, several projects, the High Street repavement, MLK repave, the sidewalk project, Hollybrook Drive has been completing, and then the others are in various uh, stages of uh, progress. And these are just a few pictures we threw in uh, to show you some of the, the final uh, work that's been done on the oil dirt portion. This is a look at the Hollybrook uh, Drive extension. Here's the Green Street uh, underpass uh, downtown that's been done, and then the uh, Harkins Parkway intersection uh, looking back toward the west. We're doing a lot of work at those intersections all up and down Hawkins. And now for the budget assumptions. When we begin and, and start to build our budget, of course, that's based on, on assumptions that we have. The first thing that we look at, of course, are our revenues. And we try to project and see what revenue is going to be coming into the city. And then we build our, our budget around the proposed revenues. Uh, the first assumption, uh, we are expecting and have received part of that, a small increase in our appraised property values. Now remember, we have uh, the city of Longview, part of uh, Harrison County, also comes into the city limits, and the major uh, portion is in Gregg County. We've received our Gregg County certified values, and they are up. Uh, Harrison County, we've not yet received those final certified va values, but we expect that that will be down um, uh, from what it was last year. So. Uh, overall, when you net all that together, we do expect a, a, an increase in the va overall value. Uh, the other assumption that we're looking at is a small increase in sales tax collections. This year, we've had a very good year, uh, and we expect to end up uh, the year uh, up about four, four and a half percent overall from last year's collections, which has been a real good year for our sales tax collections, and we've built in a small increase for next year uh, in the budget. Other assumption, uh, we are not proposing any property tax rate increase uh, as far as the maintenance and operations portion of our budget. Uh, this is something that we've maintained, you know, uh, for quite a while, and, and we don't see uh, that in this year's budget either. Now, we do uh, propose a tax rate increase for the, the debt service portion of our total tax rate. Uh, to, uh, to make our street bond debt service payments. And, of course, uh, when the voters approve the, the bond package, uh, that also goes with it, the rate increase to, to service those bonds. And so we'll talk more about that at, uh, in just a moment. Uh, we're going to propose a small water and sewer rate increase, uh, about a 2 percent increase. Um, and we'll talk more about that as we go through. Uh, no per rate increase for sanitation services. We uh, are holding that the same as last year. Uh, this budget does not include an employee pay raise. Uh, last year we had uh, uh, some compensation changes, but this year does not include a pay raise. One caveat that I want to uh, make clear is in the public safety area and fire and police, they operate on a different pay plan than the other general government employees. And within that pay plan are steps that are built in uh, in their pay plan for the years of service and things. And that's been traditionally the way we've operated. Now, employees, depending on where they are in their step plans in fire or police department, uh, will see a step increase if they're to that level wherever they fall. But uh, uh, but as far as an overall cost of living or other pay increase, there, there will not be one. Uh, and then this budget uses a, a large portion of our general fund balance uh, for uh, capital construction projects that we'll talk about as we go forward. And then uh, the budget maintains the current level of services and operations. Property values. Um, We've added a little bit to this part of the presentation, uh, and it shows you uh, since 2009 the values and how they've come in uh, over time. And, and you'll see in, in 2011 when the street bond issue was passed, for instance, 2012 was the next year. But uh, for the last four years, we've, we've shown you the rate of increase in the property values. And so overall, the average growth since then has been 1.24%. 
And that, that just illustrates, uh, number one, we do have a strong underlying economy that uh, you don't see it going down the other way very often. But the other thing it shows that while we do have a strong economy, we're not getting any growth, really. Um, you know, you'd like to see a 2 or 3% growth each year, and we've just not seen that uh, in Longview. And um, I think that's probably a reflection of the national economy as well. You're just not getting a lot of growth. But, um, but it is, has been at least uh, steady, and, and we appreciate that. Uh, property tax revenue, this is just a chart that, that shows you the revenue that's generated from the tax rates uh, against the, the property value. Sales tax revenues, uh, a little bit different. We, we do see some modest growth along in our sales tax revenues. And uh, in 2014, we expect to collect 21 million, 450, 510, and then have projected uh, a little higher collection rate for next year. This slide uh, is uh, a very important slide, I think, and shows uh, really a, a good story of where we are. But this is the, the tax rate, the total tax rate, uh, from a period of 2005 forward to 2015. And uh, again, our tax rate is divided into two portions, the debt service part and the uh, maintenance and operations part. The blue depicts the maintenance M&O and the red is the uh, debt service portion of the rate. Uh, down at the bottom, you'll see that, that, that 38 cents of our tax rate goes to maintenance and operations, and we're proposing uh, the same for this next year, 38 cents. And the debt service portion uh, is going to increase from 12.09 cents up to 13.06. And that's, again, uh, we issued another, I think, $23 million in that bond package, and so uh, those, you know, costs are coming up uh, for the debt service portion of that. One reason, uh, go ahead, Sean. Uh, this shows the debt rate increase. Uh, it's less than uh, one penny increase on the debt portion part of it, uh, and of course the impact of a homeowner uh, on a hundred thousand dollar home value, as an example, without any exemptions. Uh, would be about a $9.70 a year increase uh, for that debt portion. Uh, now, part of the uh, of that debt increase when the bonds were issued and those projections were made, uh, you know, we estimated that there would be a, a tax rate increase, obviously, to cover that bonds. And uh, that those assumptions were based on a 2% growth in our tax base every year, and we've just not seen that. You know, we've seen an average of the 1.24. So based on those assumptions, we're having to raise that tax rate a little higher uh, because we've not had the growth in, in the tax base. Uh, this is a pretty well self-explanatory pie chart about the general fund, the, where we get the, those re revenues. And of course, uh, what, 66% of our Revenue for the general fund comes uh, by sales tax and property values, property tax. And then on the expenditure t side for the general fund, this is how it's broken out. Of course, public safety uh, and uh, parks and streets, public works uh, are the, the big ticket items as far as the way we spend our general fund money. So this budget, we expect uh, general fund expenditures to be 64177305 then as a summary to the general fund, uh, we are beginning uh, October the 1st uh, with a uh, projected fund balance of 14,375,043. Uh, expected revenues of 64,177,305 uh, with matching expenditures. And that would end with the fund balance next year, end of this next year, 1415. Um, with 14,375,043, which is a 22.4% fund balance. And that's a very, very good, healthy fund balance for your general fund. Council has a policy to maintain that at 10% minimum fund balance at this point on that. 
Now we reserve, you remember every year, we reserve out two areas uh, that we, uh, for liability purposes, future liabilities. One of them is the OPEB, which is your, called other, an acronym for other post-employment benefits. Um, and that future liability we reserve out a million and a half dollars. Uh, firefighter pension fund, the same for future liabilities, uh, the one million three forty-two three eighty-six. So. With those reservations out, uh, this budget for 14-15, we would end the year just under 18% on our fund balance. Now we've got, as I said, uh, some large expenditures out of, uh, out of our general fund balance to do uh, large capital projects. The first one I want to talk about is the continuation of the George Ritchie Road construction project. And you'll remember this is really been on the books for many, many years. And uh, three, four years ago maybe, uh, this project really uh, uh, took off and it's a partnership between the city of Longview, Gregg County, and the Longview Economic Development Corporation and TxDOT uh, came together and um, in a partnership and committed the funds to, uh, to extend George Ritchie Road from Gilmer Road to the east, uh, a four-lane highway that would connect uh, with 259. Uh, where we are today is uh, the eastern portion of that from 259 all the way to McCann Road to the west is, uh, is currently beginning the construction on that. Uh, those projects have been let and under construction. And the final project will carry it from McCann west uh, to Gilmer Road. So that's uh, what we need to come to you for, for the, to finish that project up. Uh, we're going to ask you to set aside a million dollars to complete that project for right-of-way and utility line relocations. Now, a little explanation. We, we think probably a total of $600,000 uh, will finish this project up, but we want to ask for the extra money because of the utility line relocations. and. Uh, we have a good handle on right-of-way costs, but you really can't know for sure the utility line relocates until you get the thing finally designed and know exactly what uh, oil and gas transmission lines or other utility lines that you have to relocate and deal with. So we can't get a really good handle at this point on, uh, on those costs. We feel like we can do it for around the 600000 total, but we want to have plenty of the in there, uh, you know, to take care of that. And any money that would be left over in that would obviously go back into the general fund balance. But uh, we uh, would like to set aside a million dollars for that. Uh, the next project uh, is uh, construction of a new animal shelter. And of course, this project's been talked about for a long time and uh, council and mayor appointed a task force to look into that matter and their recommendation uh, came to the city council to construct a new animal shelter. Uh, council has awarded uh, the design to that project and uh, currently uh, the final design uh, is in process for a, a 20,000 square foot state of the art animal shelter. And uh, so uh, Gregg County has also committed uh, up to two and a half million dollars uh, into the project as well. So looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of five million dollars. So for our part of it, uh, we're asking to set aside two and a half million out of fund balance to, to do our part of it. That is currently uh, being designed and we think in uh, January, uh, those final plans will be back to you for a final look and then ready to go out for bid uh, right after the first of the year. The next thing we'd like to do is to ask you to also set aside $500,000 uh, out of fund balance to be reserved for future operations of the animal shelter. Now, it'll take a year to build the animal shelter, and so we won't be looking at operations until the 15-16 budget year. This time next year, we'll have operations built into our budget, but we know that uh, based on preliminary um, work that we've done, uh, it'd be a significant increase in the city's obligation on the operations side for a facility uh, like we're going to construct. So 
uh, we would like to get a, a head start on those operations next year by reserving uh, 500,000 uh, toward that for the next budget year. So uh, the total appropriations uh, that we uh, have before you tonight to consider uh, and during the rest of this budget period, uh, the George Ritchie wrote a million dollars construction of animal shelter, two, uh, two and a half million and 500,000 for future operations, a total appropriation of $4 million. So that would bring us to this point. Uh, the, just with the revenue and expenditures of our maintenance and operations, uh, we'd have an ending fund balance next year of 11532 which would be nearly 18%. And then if we, uh, you approve the animal shelter expenditure, the reservation for operations, the George Ritchie Road, that would leave you an ending fund balance and general fund of 7532 657, uh, which would be 11.73 percent of fund balance. Now, uh, I want to highlight uh, the fee changes in the fee ordinance. Normally, we don't spend a lot of time in this first session with the fee ordinances. Uh, as you know, uh, that will be part of your budget, budget package. When you adopt the budget, you'll consider the fees that uh, the city charges for any and all operations and places where we do charge fees. But I wanted to highlight uh, a little bit for you to be considering, and I think uh, on the agenda for the next budget meeting on August the 14th, uh, we'll have discussion about these fees and the ordinances and get your feelings and ideas on those. Um, and these are not all of them, but just some highlights uh, for you to start considering. And I think in your budget books, you have a copy of all those ordinances. Uh, the first one uh, that I'd point out is, is the swimming pool rental. Currently, we charge $40 uh, if somebody wants to rent one of our pool facilities. And uh, the proposal that we would uh, go up to $50 uh, an hour for the pool rental. Uh, this next one uh, is one that uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about and talk about, so I, I'm sure council will want to thoroughly discuss this one. Uh, on the swimming pool and the Jackman splash pad entry, we are currently charging for the swimming pool a uh, dollar per child for children apiece, uh, two dollars for adults, for residents and non-residents at the pools, and of course there's no entry or fee for the Jackman splash pad at this point. The proposal would be to, uh, uh, to raise that to two dollars for children, three dollars adult and then non-residents to charge $3 and $4 respectively. And then, uh, of course, that would be the Jack Mann splash pad included in there. And there's been some conversation and some discussion about whether council wanted to charge a fee for the Jack Mann splash pad or leave it free of charge. So I just point that out to you that uh, for you to be thinking about and, and we'll discuss that as thoroughly as you wish to do that. Um, now you see the asterisks there, if, and, and this is if you choose to put the Jackman splash pad in the fee schedule, uh, we've asked for uh, seasonal employees to help with that, and the fee that would be charged would offset uh, some seasonal part-time employees to help uh, with main custodial type uh, facilities. If Jack, if you don't put that in the fee schedule, there would not be any employees added or necessary for that. And then another one is an annual aquatic pass. Uh, we currently uh, have a, an annual pass uh, process, and uh, if you, uh, you know, we could include the Jackman splash pad in that aquatic pass for all of them if you choose to do that. Uh, another topic of discussion have been pavilion rentals. And we won't belabor and go through all this line by line, but uh, uh, you know, there's a schedule in here for some of the Class A. That's your large pavilions at the parks. The Class Bs are the are the smaller pavilions that uh, we currently uh, don't charge for. So this is just an example of what uh, uh, that would be a change for the pavilion uh, fees. Uh, then another one, Harvey Johnson Community Center. 
Uh, that is a community building that's on Birdsong Street. Currently, it's been used for a PAR office. It's not been on the fee schedule uh, for a while, and we'd like to consider putting that back uh, where you know citizens would use that uh, as a community building, and the proposal would be $25 uh, per hour rental. Okay, uh, again, that'll be discussed uh, uh, on August the 14th, and we'll take your comments and questions then on that. Water and wastewater. Uh, we're proposing a, a 2% increase in those rates. Uh, here you have a schedule of the different meter sizes, the 5 8 the 1 inch, and then on down and what uh, the proposed rate increase would be. For example, a 1 inch meter from 2538 to 2588. This is the minimum design where you pay that fee and you get the 2,000 gallons of, of the water for that. Then the volumetric rate, anything over the $2,000 minimum, of course, uh, we're charged uh, uh, by the 1,000 gallons. Uh, on the consumption, no matter what it is, over that amount would be at the rate of $255, 1,000, as opposed to the $2.50. On the sewer uh, portion of it, the minimum bill, uh, just like the water bill, uh, from 1205 to 1225, and the volumetric rate from 375 to 385. Uh, this would uh, sample monthly bill uh, on an average uh, consumer uh, would raise the uh, for a five eighths inch meter a dollar fifteen a month increase for the one inch a dollar ninety, and then the two inch, which are your large commercial industrial meters, uh, $9. So uh, if you approve that, uh, that increase, your revenue generated through the utility would be the $34,259,000 expenses. And then uh, part of that revenue would uh, be reserved over into the CIP. We've been doing that the last several years, as you remember, uh, in an effort to have money in there to, to do more pay with cash instead of issuing revenue bonds. So, uh, and then that would leave you a fund balance of 15%, which is what uh, the policy has been according to our bond covenants. Now this uh, debt coverage ratio, this is really uh, one of the main reasons we're asking for the increase. Uh, you'll remember that uh, the bond company, uh, the bonds that we've issued uh, have covenants in those and part of those covenants require a coverage ratio, and that's calculated by the revenue, less your operating O&M out of the utility, and you get a net revenue figure that's uh, a ratio with your debt service payment for the next year, and that gives you a, a, a coverage ratio. This one would be uh, 1.33 uh, based on these calculations, and if the minimum requirements, uh, 1.25. So in years past, we've, you know, gone below that. And, uh, you know, that's been kind of an effort to, we need to maintain at least the 125. Uh, if we don't do the rate increase, it would put us right about 1.25, 1.26. And um, which uh, puts us, you know, kind of at risk at going below that, depending on the, the seasons and the weather. Sanitation rates, we'll move through this pretty quick. We're not uh, proposing any increase at all, but uh, just a reminder, we are beginning what you approved last year, the new sanitation program uh, that really emphasizes our recycling. That'll be kicked off August the 18th. And as most of you probably know, you're getting, or your constituents are getting their new trash carts and recycling carts as we go. And uh, that's gonna be kicked off uh, we have a lot of advertisement out there, and so I hope the community, um, you know, is well aware of, of kind of where we're going with that, and, and I think it'll be a, a real success. Uh, won't go through all this. This is just the services that we'll be providing uh, that we've talked about. Uh, the rate will be $14.95 plus the fuel fee, which is not a change at all from what we currently have been doing. Now, this is a, something I want to bring your attention to that will be discussed uh, with the fee ordinance. This would go into the fee ordinance. And this has been talked about to have a re, uh, new cart return fee. 
And this is really designed, you know, uh, we want citizens to not leave the carts out on the curb, you know, long term. We, we ask citizens to put it out there and when it's picked up to then take the carts back up uh, toward the house. And so uh, people said, well, what do you, you know, what's the city going to do or what's the, the option if you don't, people just leave them out there? What do neighbors have any? any options and so it was talked about uh, to have a five dollar fee if someone just you know refuses to leave their stuff out there long term uh, as a deterrent uh, to do that so um, you know we're not trying to get into the cart police business or anything <laughs> but like anything else that you know that we look at if we get complaints and gener generated well that's uh, maybe a deterrent so that's that needs to be talked about as well and uh, would be adopted if you choose to do that as part of that fee ordinance. So in summary, um, this is the, the grand total. Uh, general fund, uh, 68177000 then your enterprise funds, special revenue, all of the funds that we, we have total up to a total budget of 163 1638390092 and I'd just point out that that total figure is about a 1% decrease this year in our total expenditures from last year. So uh, I, th I think that's, that's pretty good and I think we've got a pretty uh, lean budget. And uh, so with that, I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Good Lord. <laughs> Long winded. You didn't cover everything. We need to ask questions about, no kidding. Rich had a Don't question. Wait. Remind me again where on the the uh, wastewater, the, uh, which of the pipes are the majority of the pipes that, that go They're to one citizens? inch meters. The one inch, yeah. And the it was a pretty substantial number, like 75% or something? Yeah. It's Keith, do you remember? We really don't replace any 5 8 inch meters anymore when right. they, they go, and so I don't know. What's the So out of 27 or 8,000 customers, we've got 13,500 inch meters. Is that right? And the other one inch. Okay. So I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Ms. That 2% increase in water, uh, the last water and sewer, the last increase was that 2012? Yes, ma'am, I think so. Did we agree as a council to move forward and do this kind of on a semi? Or every yeah, other about year type four basis. or five years ago, we kind of got in a situation on our, on our coverage ratios that we were well below those covenants. And, okay. you know, instead of raising it a bunch to get out and then not raising it for the next four or five years and having those spikes, we're okay. trying to level those increases out as okay. much as we could. Because people so. are going to ask us, okay, didn't y'all just increase our water? You know, so. yeah, but, I don't think I mean, last let me, year let me we throw did. A caveat into that. <laughs> The more water we're able to sell, yeah. we wouldn't have to be doing this. Right. A la the Kilgore water deal would tremendously help us in not having to raise rates on our local citizens. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Um, just for clarity, did you say that there would be, outside of police and fire, because they operate separately, there would be no employee Races. No. What you, there will is that what you're saying? There yes, will not, there will not be no. for anybody. Not even our hourly. I'm not talking our salary people. No, no one. The only increase someone have if there was a promotion or a, you know, you apply for another job in the city. Yeah, because that's kind of and that's kind of what I was wondering about yeah. because that's kind of what we've seen through the years. Um, and just looking at the information, when we say no raises, then you have someone that ends up promoted. So it defeats the purpose if we say that. So I, I would ask okay. for a little bit more maybe consideration to that. I don't know how because you've done a good job in streamlining the budget. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that. But at the same time, I do. I would like to see us look at at least trying to um, follow the process correctly for our hourly employees that may perhaps deserve a raise, you know, and, and there may be others. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Allen. Yes, sir. Um, on your uh, increases on the street bonds, uh, have you looked at the, do we have some bonds that are maturing that we're paying off that would uh, reduce our overall indebtedness? Have you considered that? Yes, sir, and Ms. Cohen could answer it specifically, but I think in the next three or four years that starts going down pretty significantly on our bonded uh, 
okay, we'll be so retiring we'll, some bonds. We, we will have an opportunity to look at that. Yes. yes. I think no, we, do, we don't, I don't need it right now. I mean, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. no. I think in the next, I think three or four years out, you see, we'll see a pretty significant okay. decrease in our bonds. On the, uh, on the swimming pools, uh, when you say a child is currently $1, what is the age for a child? Oh, okay. Uh, 17 and under. Oh, okay, good. All right, how do you determine whether they're resident or non-resident? We're gonna work with GIS to come up with that. They've got two or three ways they're gonna help us with. I just wanted to use a driver's Zip license code. or something. Or, uh, yeah. I mean, you, do, you just ask them when they come up where they live. Yes, sir. So they're gonna say they live in the city. <laughs> More likely. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try. All right. Uh, currently, we are not charging for the splash pad, but you, you're saying in order to put seasonal employees at the splash pad, we would need to charge. Would you explain to me what you mean by seasonal employees at the splash pad? Summertime. Summertime. Well, I mean, do we have no employees there now? Or do we? Uh, no, sir. Okay, didn't we, are we, didn't we move a uh, new facility in there? I mean, or is it, was it? Stand. No, we're building concession stand. We have, the, con stand. <laughs> we okay, have the concession well. stand, but we have two employees in there that are responsible for handling money and, and serving, so they don't go out and clean up clean up stuff. How That's, do we get it cleaned up currently? We clean it once a day. Okay, with city employees. Early in the morning. Okay. So if you have incidents during the day. Um, All right. I, my, my, what I'm coming up to, uh, I would encourage us to see if we could stay with the one dollar per child. If you go up on the adults and non-residents, I think that'd be fine, but I'd like to see us stay with $1 per child. That's what I understand we're gonna discuss on the 14th and we'll, we'll take all of your, it, it's your pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the, the usage of that pad is heavy and, yes. and without having the custodial, it's, uh, think, we get a lot of complaints about I, that. I think the $1 per child would work at the Jackman also, but I'd like to see it $1 across instead of uh, $2. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind, I mean, I think the $1 at any of the uh, facilities, splash pad or pool for the child would be a good fee. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I got it. you got? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Willard. Yes, sir. Uh, that was gonna be a $5 fee for leaving that uh, container out over the week. Is that 90 days after after the implementation of the program on August 18th? So if you give 90 days, that's November of 2014. So are we giving like 90 days? We're, not, we're giving one day. One day. Hey, All man, right. you leave your stuff well, out, somebody calls and complains, you $5. Well, I'm going to get a bunch of calls well, if you, well, if you, <laughs> Good. <laughs> then, then you ought to tell them to put their card up. They want wow. to pay 5 If the council implements it, it'd go into effect October 1. October 1, yeah. okay. But, you know, I mean, yes, October 1 is when it would go into effect. Okay. Well, it's, it's an adjustment period, you know, having the new cars. Yeah, I know. Like I say, I mean, we the intent's not to just... You know, get one call and go out and slap a five dollar right, okay. hit on anybody. You know, it's um, the sanitation cart police led by <laughs> yes. Mr. Led by Mr. Sidney Allen. For the people, we can double up and do the pothole patrol with yeah, the cart yeah, police. Yeah. And Gary, you did a cart patrol yeah. for right. the people that currently have the ninety gallon containers that uh, do not plan on using them. Do we have a process now? Are we in the have we started picking up the ones that the people say they don't want to use? I think so, Mr. Archer. Yeah, they, they call in and you send somebody out later that evening or the next day. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, Council, this is our first go through. I'm sure you're gonna have plenty of questions in between now and the next meeting of the 14th would be the time to contact Mr. Willard, schedule a time to you know, come sit down. I saw a bunch of you writing lots of notes, which is good to see. Um, and schedule a meeting with Mr. Willard uh, so that staff can prepare, um, you know, qu uh, answers to the different questions on the meeting of the 14th of August so that all of us are in the loop, okay? Um, all righty, then we're gonna move to the items of community interest. Mr. Sims. I know Gary does. Gary, what you got? Yes, I sure do. Oh, here you go. Now, Gary, who's that you? Well, if you can see it, it's kind of dark. But I was out this weekend, well, this past week, at the youth, oh, baseball, good over here. youth baseball tournament. 
uh, out at Lear Park for kids 14 and under. It was, it was a kickoff on like Friday. Everything. Yeah, them kids are 14 years old. 14 years old. They're bigger taller, than you, man. Almost taller than I am. God, there's some man. big kids. But it, it, I assume it went well. Uh, but we kicked off the program, and uh, it, it, it went well. Good. Uh, see the next one. The Splash Park is now open. This Splash Park here is at Stamper Park. We also have one at Lear Park. And we have one at Broughton. Am I correct, Miss Hill? And Spring Hill. And Spring Hill. <coughs> There's a lot of kids out there, so take your kids out there and let them enjoy the Splash Park. This uh -oh. next one, oh, got an Air Force pilot there. I was Lee Turner University over up there, aviation school, out at in Lakeport, in Greg by the Greg County Airport, and I went out there for my first flight lesson. Uh, you taking I, flying lessons? I'm going to fly you when I get my life No. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk to that ATF and tell them to put the word out when you when you take off in the morning. But I want to know what direction you're going. They throw out the so new go flight program, way. and they also uh, educate you on getting your pilot license, and they also have some private pilots also that you can, I uh, guess, rent or lease for a couple of days if you need to. Uh, they have a plane for a couple Robin? days? For a couple days, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring money. Uh, the next one, Robin. The next one is, you may have this on your list also. It was the, uh, uh, let's see, what was that? The, I, I forgot what it was now. Promotion. Fire department. Fire department. Oh, yeah. Oh, the uh, oh, part of the prevention. Ceremony. The hot. Oh, the, the promotion ceremony. Okay. Out at the... Uh, Firefighter yeah. Training Center. Oh, yeah. And uh, that went real good. I thought I had a picture, but I guess I didn't get it in time enough, but that went real, real good. Uh, uh, we had four individuals that were promoted, uh, two females and yep. two males. And I thought it was great. Good. Uh, that's all I got, man. All right. Ms. Cashin. I don't have any photos, but I do want to thank, I have one, I should have brought it, uh, but I want to thank uh, Chief Steelman and the Fire Department uh, for chauffeuring me and the little quad car, Juneteenth, had a blast. Um, I did get screamed at, Chief, because I didn't have any candy, but uh, we had a really good time, and thank you, and I, I just really appreciate uh, Station 3 and the entire Fire Department. Um, the NAACP banquet is going to be Saturday night at the Summit Club. Uh, tickets are $40. I'm not sure if they're still available. I believe it's pretty Friday night. I'm sorry. Saturday night is Ricky Smiley. Friday night uh, at uh, the Summit Club and uh, at 6.30, right? Seven. Seven. Okay. Ah, Thank really? you for correcting <laughs> me. I, just, I don't have it together. I appreciate it, Council Manley. Um, at seven at the Summit Club. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, sometimes I'm just not here. Please come and support the cause. Sunday, August the 3rd, uh, there will be a community prayer vigil type event held at Broughton Park beginning at 6.30 p.m. Please come out and support our, our nonviolent, anti-violence movement. And last but not least, Tuesday, August the 12th, there will be a nonviolent, anti-violence, shall I say, town hall meeting at Broaden Recreation Center at 6.30 p.m. I will feature a panel of several people involved in the community and our own Chief uh, Dingler, he was here, he will be there. As, oh, there he is, hi Chief. He will uh, participate as well. Citizens are encouraged to come out and just share your stories and as we work together to continue to promote nonviolence and not just any one specific type of violence but all forms of violence because if it affects one person in our community it affects all of us so please come out that event is sponsored by the anti-violence community team which is a grassroots initiative thank you all right this is your Harry. Yes, just briefly, uh, I would like to echo Councilman Smith's comments and congratulate the four that were promoted in the fire department this week, and specifically Captain Amy Dodgen, who was the first female captain ever to be promoted in our department. That's incredible and a great honor. Good deal. Mr. Manley. Yes, and she was paid some high compliments by the other young lady that was promoted uh, at the same time. So I think he even referred to Amy as a role model. So congr congratulations to both of them. Um, 
I'm probably going to jump in front of the mayor on this. The July 4th celebration, if you weren't there, you really missed a great time. It was fabulous in every uh, form and fashion. Uh, people were there all day long. I want to compliment and congratulate all the city staff that worked so hard to put on just a great time. Uh, a lot of good food, uh, a lot of great entertainment, and i got to tell you, I've seen a lot of fireworks displays in my life. I think that finale might be just the absolute best ending of a fireworks display I've ever seen in my life, and I've been you know, ballparks in Dallas, and this was as good or better than anyone I've ever seen. So just a great time, and congratulations, and everybody I talked to who was there that day said they had a great time too, so good for y'all. Um, the city manager mentioned the comprehensive plan. Uh, in the paper today, there was also reference to the uh, Longview MPO's survey there. I want to encourage people that might hear this to get online at longviewmpo.com and give your input on transportation needs that you, that you think our city needs. Uh, the MPO is going to be working in conjunction with our comprehensive plan folks to make sure that we're not redundant. But again, longviewmpo.com, please get online and, and let us let them know what you think. It's going to be important, and they'll, again, they'll be working with our comprehensive plan. Last but certainly not least, I spent a lot of time down at Development Services over the last month or so, and I want to congratulate everybody down there. You all are really working together as a team, and it's been recognized by the developers and the builders that I've talked to. And it's not just the reorganization and moving the furniture around. It's the, uh, you know, there's a real attitude change down there at, and, and it involves everybody that works down there. And I want to give y'all congratulations and encourage you to continue the hard work. Okay, Mr. Allen. Well, I want to say thank you to Mr. Willard for an excellent presentation on the budget. And we're all going to be involved. And this is your money, the taxpayers, the people that are here tonight, the people that are watching on TV. And personally, I will do my best to make sure that your money is spent in a proper manner for the best use. Thank you. That's it. God, that's to the point, buddy. All right. Partners in Prevention in the Longview Fire Department will host a, the Heroes of Tomorrow Hot Camp on Saturday, July 26th from 8.15 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 411 American Legion. This is a one-day camp for 7th through 12th grade boys and girls. Parents encouraged to come to an informal lunch session with Chief Steelman from 12 to 1. For more information, call Partners in Prevention, 903-237-1019. City of Longview Developmental Services and the Fire Department will host a community forum on Wednesday, July 30th at 10 a.m. to noon at the East Texas Builders Association, 2023 Alpine Road. Purpose of the meeting is to provide builders, developers, design professionals, and the community at large an opportunity to ask questions and provide feedback about the proposed changes to the building and fire codes. City of Longview Parks and Recreation Department is conducting an online survey to solicit public input, uh, input for the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan update. Survey will help the depart, uh, department prioritize projects over the next five years. Survey deadline is July 31st, 2014. You can go to the uh, parks.longviewtexas.gov. The Metropolitan, now you already talked about that, the MPO. Yeah. Go online and take the MPO uh, survey, please, or you can call 903-237-1062. That deadline is August 15th, 2014. City View Municipal Television Channel 5 has a new look. You can still find the same dependable information about City of Longview services and events. You can also stay up to date on local weather and national news. Sean, did you play the video? There it is right there, the video. Okay, and uh, I wanna talk about, um, you know, the, uh, the events of 4th of July. Uh, we uh, to put on that entire day and in everything that went into preparing the events and um, getting you know get getting things to where we saw lots of smiling faces from our citizens. We got off to a rocky start, but I think we uh, finished strong. Uh, I think um, yeah, kudos need to go to Dixie Golden and, and her staff. Um, she was running around like a chicken with a head cut off for about a week before that ever took place. They did a wonderful job with the logistics um, compared to years in the past where we had complaints about traffic and everything else. It, it pretty much went off without a hitch. I was there all day uh, on Friday and um, I, they did a wonderful job. And uh, I think we've sort of set the groundwork now. 
uh, for next year. We'll be looking at ways to enhance that that day. Uh, but I'm hoping that um, we've set the ground now and, and hopefully we'll get other partners involved with helping uh, put on that particular show. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to adjourn to uh, executive section, uh, personnel matters under Texas government code section 551074 to consider, discuss candidates for the end of selection process to uh, hire a director of development services. Okay, council will adjourn. We probably will not be back. <laughs>